Did they say seven? I'm just trying to get a guess right. I just heard from my colleagues. Maybe they shouldn't be talking to you during a meeting. And then we'll go to the colleagues and speakers on the consent calendar. We'd like to first call out the members of the public who have moved their cards. Speaking on several items on the consent calendar, I'm Michelle Stephanie. The patent is signed up for six items, if I have that correctly. I'm showing Jessica Holly. The patent is signed up for five items. I'm showing Kimber Morton. The patent is signed up for the entire consent calendar. Actually, item 71 through item 76. I'm showing in Nicola Katz. If I said that correctly, I apologize if I did not. Signing up for six items. And Ellie Hughes also signing up for six items. Now, the city attorney is showing six items from the members of the public on the consent calendar. That is the right of the matching of the people. Oh, other individual and six others. And you can come in any order that you wish to proceed. Sir? Were you going to come? Do you want my seat? Ms. Sherman has signed. She had also asked for the opportunity to consolidate her time on the non-consent portion of the meeting list, along with Ms. Perry. Six minutes. Six minutes. Thank you. What about, I'm sorry, I'm going to talk about Kimber Morton and also wanted to see her son to write down what she wishes to call. And let me just defer to the city attorney. For the consent calendar, there's a maximum of six minutes. Two minutes for items until maximum six minutes. For the non-consent, it's two minutes for items until maximum of ten minutes. So even with another individual wanting to see their son, assuming I'm not able to speak, or she can't appear with me, can I speak for her? How many items did you sign up for on non-consent? Both ladies have signed up for six items on the consent calendar. And Ms. Dyer has signed up for six items. Okay, but each one of them would have six minutes. And so the question before you is if the other speaker wished to see her time to Ms. Dyer, would she exceed the six minutes? She would. So what would the maximum time be? It would be six minutes. The other person, of course, has the option to exceed the six minutes independently, but under the rules, the maximum is six minutes. So you would not have more than six minutes, I think that's true. So there's no way to get by her to be a primary reason. They can still be some way to get lost. No, but she's on her own. Yeah. Separate one. Okay, thank you. Well, first of all, I'd like to thank you to the City Council. I'm sure you guys can remember me from last time, and so I wanted to use my time to address a measure of why I made two minutes of analysis for you this evening. The first being the incentive for the OPD supported by Mayor Kahn and in some ways the members of the Council as well. Secondarily, the financial burden that the city is already under. On the incentive for it, Mayor Kahn and the Chief of OPD, Howard Jordan, have been working with violent community voices of the society who have come together under the Occupy Our Sun umbrella for political protests and a redress of their grievances, which where better else to do that than those city hall steps within their local government. I kind of wanted to tell you a story, and I'm still a little down that people are leaving while I'm speaking, but I wanted to talk about specifically Nika Crawford, who's a friend of mine. She's an open mind friend, and she's also a student at Cal State USA. Her sister is named Paula, and she also just graduated from Cornell University and passed her bar in California on her first try. Nika and I, on January 4th, attended the General Assembly right outside here, and we were having a conversation about the organic class structure of America, and we were deep off into this conversation, which in my opinion puts us right into the middle, dead center of our First Amendment rights. When all of a sudden, 17 local police officer cars pulled up and riot officers jumped out, and we didn't know what to do. Now, we ran over to the sidewalk, and she asked me where to go, and I told her that I didn't know because we were in public and I had no idea where it would be safe at this point. We had several officers escort us to the corner of 14th and Broadway, where we were told that we should stay there and we did not want to go to jail. 
every 20 time I had my camera and I was video recording, video recording and I stepped off a little bit from her, Nika never knew really that she was arrested for obstruction of justice. When she went to court, that charge didn't change. There was no obstruction of justice, but there was malicious obstruction of a walkway, of a throughway, of the sidewalk, which is um, going toward the assessment, the excessive force, and the blatant unjust, the unjust cause of the unjust attacks that the people of Occupy are actually subjected to. So I'm saying that there's a lack of oversight. However, Baron Khan is not only supporting this, but she's actually inciting or giving the direct orders for the police department to control, quote unquote, the Occupy um, encampment of the occupiers, but she's not providing a lack of, um, not providing oversight to ensure that non-violent protesters are not being beat, that compliant people are not being arrested for unjust causes, that they're not being chemical warfare abused when children are present. Also, people are being arrested for being on a table to put food on. I don't know about you, but I thought that I should put food on the ground. So if I'm coming out there and eating with people, which several people are doing out there, they're being arrested. One person individual was actually beat with her own body when she rolled past the police officers holding up a peace sign. These are things that are not only seen, but they are reported and they are on the internet for anyone to access. So these are the types of things why I'm saying that we need to be very weary of offering more money to the upper police department as this is going to fix a lot of the problems that we're having. The reason that we're having so many problems is because we're investing in the problem maker. What's happening now is that we are criminalizing a lot of the people who are disenfranchised from our political process and from just being able to thrive within a highly capitalistic society. Now, I also want to speak about a couple other members here, or who are not here actually, and they can't be here today because they are open residents and they were arrested during protests non-violently um, when the judge gave them stay away order to confront about the plaza. These are open residents who have to break the law and come speak to the people who are supposed to represent them. It's a systematic disenfranchisement and oppressing more people within the city of Oakland. And unfortunately, within that same simultaneously, <coughs> within, within that same um, action, you're doing nothing but empowering Occupy, which I'm not saying is a bad thing, but it's just showing that Occupy is providing more of a forum to accept more of the community's voices, to actually hear their problems and try to work towards fixing them with very limited resources and in the face of very direct and violent oppression. So I'm saying when I hear this, um, once again, the lady before me who came up and spoke, whose name I didn't know, who was saying that there was a list of dynamite being thrown at the police. I mean, I don't know if you know me or research me or whatever after the last um, time I was here, but I, I'm not a poor character. And, I mean, I've had, like I said, not a perfect past, but I'm not a poor character. And I've been sitting out there a lot of time out of pure curiosity to see what was happening actually on the front line of the Occupy movement. And as I see a lot of these injustices, and as a person who believes that I'm, I'm as an American, the Constitution is supposed to protect me, to protect me from the Bill of Rights, from the abuse of government, I see this and I come crying to city council and I come trying to give as much time as I can to speak to you because I truly feel as if I voted for representatives and if this, if this system is working, then these problems have to be fixed. We shouldn't be giving more and more money to the police department to criminalize the people trying to make it. We should be giving more money to the school system. Let's not even talk about the fact that someone might need to think that we're going to do about the level of education that's or the quality of education that's being given, but let's talk about the fact that we can't even keep the schools open. That's highly problematic. So now we have it to where several people can't even go to school. We have it to where a lot of people can't find jobs and they're disenfranchised. What else are they supposed to do here? Like how long are they supposed to survive? I want to continue to address this later on the non-consent item where I'm going to have more time. Um, I do apologize if it's some of this, this is excessive, but being that I'm a resident of Oakland and I do want to participate in the government as it is and try to get things done through the processes and continue to be respected by the chamber, at least I feel as if I'm being respected by the chamber, that um, you know that we can continue to have the dialogue and actually work towards progress, but we can't do that when we keep using the Oakland Police Department to try to criminalize those who really do just need help, who really do just need for the people here to listen to their problems, to really listen and try to fix them, not point fingers, not judge, but step out of your shoes and step out of like, I don't know, the situation of the box in which you're trying to like take your perspective and look at their problems and then actually listen to them. I'm sorry, give me two more seconds to wrap up. But I'm like, just actually listen to them and try to work towards the, the solution instead of creating more of a, a less I mean, a less solvable problem. So um, once again, thank you and I look forward to seeing you next time.
cruisers sped up, actually breaking the law by going too fast when there was no emergency. And however many officers bounced out of there and riot here to attack those of us standing on the plaza. I was one of those of us standing on the plaza. I was standing on the plaza. <coughs>
been talking to like many students and have had sleeping patterns basically uniform the day. Y'all need to look yourself in the mirror someday and see the truth. What's going on here? Meanwhile, quit making us wait till the end of the meeting to speak. <coughs> because this government is for the people and by the people. And every one of you who hinder our right to address these issues that we're addressing, we should go. Make sure the restroom is clear before 
before making those encouraging remarks. <laughs> I also know, I'm sorry it wasn't disparaging. I would consider the phrase, are you ready for the torture, to be a pretty disparaging remark. Oh. I've heard you say it. the world speaking now. You can't send one off. 
at 4 a.m., not only do they ignore my first call and not send an officer, they tabled my call to internal affairs to be an occupy-related complaint. I did not even mention the word occupy. I simply mentioned there was an explosion across the street from Mobile Plaza. So now at 4 a.m. when I'm requesting, can you please send an officer to find out what the heck was that? Are we in danger in downtown Oakland? What was the explosion sound that everybody heard? They still didn't give me an answer. They said they sent an officer. They said I'd get a phone call. 3 a.m. 3 p.m. the following day on the 15th, I still have not had a phone call from OPD. I call. I am told, well, you know, we thought you were calling in an occupied complaint. Internal affairs will call you back on Tuesday. I reconfirm with them again. This is not an occupied matter. This is an explosion in your city. When are you going to send an officer to find out what is going on? I mean, where are the priorities in the city that we can have 150 plus officers parade the streets for a peaceful march that didn't entail in any violence or any destruction of the city? Wasted payroll, wasted gas, wasted resources. So we can have an explosion, and I guarantee you there are officers in the area because there is not one day that I can visit this plaza without seeing an officer. So there had to be an officer out there that heard it and made an executive decision on their own behalf to not go and find out what it was. So I think before we put more money into OPD, we wonder why are they not prioritizing their jobs and responding to real life issues that are going on instead of following a group of peaceful protest marchers exercising their first amendment right to carry signs and protest against things that are unjust. We have that right. But OPD does not have the right to ignore real life crime and real life safety and danger issues out on the street. They ignore it, and you guys are all responsible for what orders they follow. So I think we need to take a minute before giving them more money and demand that they use their resources more efficiently to the things that matter. Because while you're parading the street with 150 plus officers, there's real crime out there. There's kids getting shot in front of taco trucks. There are robberies and home invasions in Rockridge area. Because they're all downtown, making sure that Occupy doesn't stand on the sidewalk. This is
and create a presence here of consciousness and of helping and feeding the poor children that still walk past crack and uh, crime and prostitution on High Street and International where the crime is. The police should be every day with a young girl brought over here from who knows all parts of the world. Uh, that's why they call it International. It's brought it back now. Because that's all you see. So address that. Um, we're, we're not really taking care of this people situation. The open commune, speaking for the people, is saying that we are your general assistance because all those people that have the waiting line of general assistance, I'm one of them. That was fired. And they didn't, you know, give me no justification for being fired. But uh, just for being in that experience, <coughs> having had, being paid $57,000 a year for these children that weren't my own, and being away from my own children, and having to here from out of the city, because I couldn't afford to live in the city and work here too. And then having to take that away and, you know, you guys have things, so it's comfortable. That experience <coughs> is visceral to you. That's what's real to you. And I'm telling you, the streets are what's real to us with. And this is all fake. <coughs> this is all illusion here. Because you guys don't really run anything. Except us <coughs> And, and really, if you want to, if you want to connect with people, if you want to ensure constituents next term, come and live with us on the platform. Ask me for a tent. I'm the supply guy. I'm still the supply guy. I'm still available to supply mental health counseling, security. I used to do that. Yeah, I know. Uh, what else? What else do we supply people? Uh, medical care, mm -hmm. first aid, food, clothing, and shelter, which you don't have, but it's affordable. So the people are asking before we <coughs> got back against the wall. So when we got to push the back against the wall long enough, I mean, it's fight or fight. And people are tired of flying away to other parts of the East Bay to try to survive when this is supposed to be where culture strives and when people are proud to speak their mind and are able to speak their mind and express themselves without being interrupted or put down keep it taken person. Amen.
Thank you.
was he lying and then God brought up what? Um, even if he was telling the truth about doing the wrong thing. I don't understand that she's in the building. So what's the job you have looking at that? San Francisco has 16 ethics commissioners. 16 paid ethics staff, sorry. Uh, we've got one. And we've got a process that has no teeth. Uh, and that is just simply unacceptable. If you want to give a tribute to Sanji, $500,000, buy 100,000 lousy dollars, and get two FCP on that commission, get a chance to work. Yay. Mr. President and members, I'll name some problems.